sub hey and guys, subscribe to me. To another video from Future Ballers. They've got the top 10 prospects in the 2018 NBA draft. Uh, this might be a little bit controversial, but these are just my opinions. You guys can tell me in the comments if you thought that I left off anyone or that someone should be ranked higher or lower. Um, and yeah, let's get into this. So coming in at number 10, we've got this 6'9 small forward prospect who's going to be going to Kentucky next year named Kevin Knox. Kevin Knox is just an athletic monster, basically. He's also, you know, a very gifted offensive player. Um, we'd like to see some more on the defensive end, but in this point in this in this career, that can be said for a lot of guys. So let's look at his stats really quickly. He gets 23 points per game, close to 10 rebounds, 2 assists, 1.6 steals, and 1.9 blocks. Again, he's playing against high school players, so his stats are going to be a little bit inflated. So, you know, uh, don't put a huge amount of stock into those, but, you know, those are still pretty impressive numbers. Let's look at some highlight tape really quickly. All right, so as you can see, the kid can shoot. Um, he's got a nice, clean-looking jumper. And, you know, that athleticism, while he doesn't have the best defensive instincts, allows him to get up against smaller players and just block and just block their shots, you know, stuff like that. Um, and, you know, he's just – he's such a gifted uh, – fit. he's physically – Gifted as a prospect, so much that he can just, you know, pull up from anywhere, stuff like that. So let's look at our next prospect. Coming in at number nine, we've got Colin Sexton. He's a combo guard, uh, 6'3", going to be going to Alabama next year. Um, he's another one of those great athletic prospects. He's more of a slasher than a shooter, as I'd say. Um, yeah, let's look at some stats from him. 28 points per game, 7 rebounds, 2 steals, and... Um, yeah, so those are his stats. Again, don't put too much stock into this because, um, once again, they are high school stats. And they're not, you know, him playing against uh, top-level competition, really, as you'd say. Um, yeah, if you get into these highlight tapes, you're going to be seeing how uh, that hang time that he can create by uh, getting up so high off the ground uh, allows him to finish through defenders. Um, he's also got a little bit of a shot. Uh, that's still something he's developing and working on. So at this point in his career, but you know that 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 has shown progress. He's got good fundamentals on it, and it can really improve. Let's look at another prospect, Trayvon Duvall. This is probably the most controversial one I'm gonna have, ranking him in front of Colin Sexton because a lot of people think that he's a little bit worse. But I gave the edge to Trayvon here because of playmaking ability number one and defensive hustle. Uh, Trayvon Duvall. You know, he's an athletic specimen, again, you know, um, and he's more experienced in that point guard position. He went to IMG, uh, so his stats are going to be 17 points per game, yeah, and 11 games played. Uh, yeah, so 17 points per game at IMG Academy is pretty good, you know. Uh, you don't see those crazy numbers as the other guys, but he's at IMG. So now we look at some highlight tape of him. Uh, yeah, so he can really just, you know, he can dish the ball, he can get up, uh, he can block shots, he can basically, he's everything that you'd really want in a point guard, except he does not have a jumper. That's one of the things. Uh, when he shoots the basketball, it's almost like he's shoot, flicking his wrist with a bowling ball in it. It's just, you know, it's something that he really needs to work on to go to the next level. Look at our next prospect. We've got a sophomore out of Texas A&M, Robert Williams. Now, Robert Williams could have gone and probably been a mid-round prospect to a lottery pick in the 2017 NBA draft. But he decided to stay in school to try to get that draft stock up. And, you know, it could end up paying off big time for him. So that's why he's our seventh prospect. He had 12 points basically last year and eight rebounds. So, you know, solid stats for a freshman. He's a, another one of those uh, physical specimens. He has, a, he has a wingspan of, I think it's 7'6", seven, seven, I've heard. Yeah, so that's huge for a 6'9 guy, which he is. Uh, let's look at some highlight tape. These are high school highlight tapes since we're showing other guys high school highlight tapes. So as you can see, he just has great defensive instincts. And that length allows him to be able to get up and do stuff like that, dunk the ball. Coming in next, we have another sophomore, Miles Bridges. Now, Miles Bridges is sort of a... Shooting guard, power forward type player, but he's a little bit undersized at 6'7". Um, but, you know, he's he's a monster athletically. And, you know, if he can improve um, his handles and his jumper, a lot of people say he can be a top 7 pick in this draft. Now, he had 
close to 17 points last year at Michigan State, eight rebounds and two assists. Um, so those are very, very, very elite numbers for a freshman prospect. He could have gone to the 2017 NBA draft and been a first round uh, draft pick, uh, lottery draft pick, I'm sorry. But he decided to stay. You know, he had some unfinished business at Michigan State that he wanted to take care of. You know, I understand that. Of course, you know, I'm happy about that because I'm a Michigan State fan, personally. Um, but yeah, uh, that's pretty much what you, what, what, I, what we have to say about him. As you can see here, he's just able to rise up above defenders and stuff like that. You know, he's just cr crazy athletic. That, that's his main point. Next up, we've got DeAndre Ayton. Now, DeAndre Ayton, for the most, for the large part of his career, was considered the number one prospect in this class. He got lost in the woodwork a little bit um, when a couple of these guys emerged, but he is still a seven-foot monster from the Bahamas. You know, he can do a lot of things in the court. He's a polished offensive player in most parts of his game. He's got 21 points per game and 16 rebounds. Uh, yeah, those are pretty good numbers. Yeah, just and also he's just got elite size. Elite size is something that a lot, a lot of guys have in this draft, um, and you know he's one of those guys. He's been on the recruiting circuit for a while, so these guys know him. Here's some highlight tape of him, just so you can see. He's really athletic. If he had to improve one thing, I would overall say it's his motor and his jump shot. The guy uh, can be caught lacking sometimes, you know, just like slacking uh, when he's playing. He doesn't really sometimes uh, go 100% on each time that he gets the ball, and, you know, that's a big problem that scouts have uh, seen and that coaches have also seen. Moving into our uh, fourth best prospect, we've got Mohamed Bamba. Now, Mohamed Bamba is pretty new to the recruiting circuit, I'd say. He's got a 7'9 wingspan, which is out of this world. He's a 6'11 guy, and, you know, he's really raw offensively. But where he makes the big difference is in rebounding and defense. He's a lead at that. Let's look at some stats. He had 12 rebounds per game, 6 blocks, and 12 points. Now, those 12 points don't pop out. But if those six blocks aren't popping out to you, then I don't know what you're doing. Uh, yeah, so six blocks, that's just um, that's indicative of how good of a shot blocker he is, not just physically, but also with, def with his defensive mindset. Yeah, so let's get into some highlight tape of him. As you can see here, he's just so long that, you know, guards who come to the paint aren't able to get the ball up over him, you know, stuff like that. It's just it, he, he's going to be a monster in college, and he's going to be a monster in the NBA. By the way, he's going to Texas, so watch out for him there. I've got to uh, mention DeAndre Ayton is going to Arizona, uh, so watch out for him there too. Uh, let's look at our next prospect. Number, coming in at number three, this one, I think it, I think it's, a, I think it's the right placement for him. Luka Doncic, uh, a European guy. Uh, he plays the one through the three basically. He's been playing professionally since he was like 14 years old, so. Yeah, most scouts know who he is and know his name. Um, yeah, so if his uh, points don't drop, he's averaged 14 a game. Uh, he's also gotten four assists per game. You saw these charts here just the years past, too, in case you want to see his progression as a player. But, um, yeah, this guy's just, he's great. The stats don't pop out to you as much because he's been playing professionally. But trust me, if this guy was playing in college, those 14 points per game and four assists per game, would translate to something, would translate to something just monster, because you know he's playing against older players, uh, professional players. Some of these guys that he's playing against are even former NBA players. So, yeah, so stuff, the stuff, the stuff like that is just, it's there for him. He's also got that experience. Coming in at number two, I know this one is going to be controversial, um, but we've got Marvin Bagley. As you can see here, he reclassified this year and committed to Duke. Now, him going to Duke, I think it's going to have a negative effect on him because they've already got so many good guys. I don't think he's going to get the usage rate that he wanted. But, yeah, let's get into some stats from him. From him. 24 points per game. 10 rebounds per game. Yeah, so those are, those are solid. Those are solid for a high school senior. Uh, also, he can, he's a very versatile player. Very, very, very versatile. He's got uh, a great wingspan, great size for his position. He's athletic. He can block shots. Great defensive instincts. Um, the one thing he has to work on probably is with a lot of these young guys, tightness on his handle and a jumper. A jumper and tightness on his handle will make this guy unstoppable at the next level. 
And, you know, as you can see, he played in the Drew League with um, DeMar DeRozan, where he actually had a couple good plays on him. He kind of, as you see here, he kind of drove past him with a good dribble move, got to the rim, and finished hard. Coming at number one, we've got Michael Porter Jr. Michael Porter Jr. is by far the most polished offensive player in this draft class. Uh, you know, he can just do everything from shooting to driving to dunking to dishing out the ball. He is the most offen offensively gifted player in this draft. Also, if I also he averaged 36, 36 points this year, I'm sorry, and 13 rebounds. Uh, you can't really you can't really say anything bad about that stat line. That's an amazing that's an amazing stat line, by the way. If I had to give one weakness for him, it would probably be motor on defense. You know, he kind of seems disinterested sometimes on defense, and that's gonna that's gonna hurt him at the college level. But I think he has all the power in the world to change that around. And um, honestly, I do think he will do that because you know he's already shown how hard he works on his craft and how hard he works to be a good player and to you know be able to produce at a high level for a good team. And you know, um, there's nothing that says he won't do that. So thanks for. And you're looking at he's the number one prospect. As always, guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to this to this channel. Thanks.